Commissioner for Education for the State of Abia. Dr. Maxwell, welcome to NigerianTVOnline.com. Thank you very much. Ah, you very Dr. Much. Max, you're known. Thank People you. know you. Yeah. But Dr. Max, is, is it okay to call you Dr. Max? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, you can see if you can hear the sound of uh, his voice. <laughs> this man is not exactly uh, native, so to speak. Uh, Dr. Max. Could you please give our viewers a brief synopsis of your CD uh, before we dive into the educational aspect of this state? Thank you very much, uh, uh, my good friend. Uh, I am Dr. Ndugwe Maxwell Adendo, the Commissioner for Education at the State, Nigeria, West Africa. Uh, I have uh, a Bachelor of Science degree in Accounting from Oklahoma City University. I have a master's of uh, science degree in accounting too from Oklahoma City University in the United States. I also have a PhD in administration from All Saints University in New York. I have uh, contested four elections in Nigeria since uh, I returned from the United States to Nigeria, namely uh, two times uh, into the Abia State House of Assembly. First was in 1998 when I first contested uh, the election into to become a member of the State House of Assembly, mm -hmm. and I won that election. Uh, a year later, uh, I recontested the same election because the first one could not be inaugurated because of the death of the then head of state, Abacha and Abiola. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, another election was called up and uh, recontested, and I won again. You know, and a winner, uh, a winner. We we'll love it. You know, we we'll love winners. And, <laughs> and uh, I served out as uh, a minority leader in the State House of Assembly for four years. And shortly after that, I had an opportunity to also contest to become an executive chairman or a mayor of whom I had served local government as it were. And that I did, you know, uh, for two years. And uh, in last year, I contested to also become the governor of the state. You know, with the present governor, and I uh, came third in the party primaries, mm -hmm. and of course considered defeat to him. Uh, of course, the, the party, uh, which is the PPA Progressive People's Alliance, in his own wisdom, you know, uh, made me the director of a campaign of Governor T.A. Mm -hmm. You know, and I uh, led I led the party in the entire state. All the 17 local governments that led the party, and uh, of course we won the final election against PDP. And of course, I'm sure that the, the governor, in his own wisdom too, you know, did it necessary to compensate me, you know, by merit, uh, with this position as the commissioner for education. And this was done last year, August 2007. And since then, I have been serving as the commissioner for education, a position that I'm very happy to occupy. Well, if you, what you're seeing is uh, a winner in many fields to get to this point of educating Abians, and we're very happy to see that. Commissioner, 
education in Africa. This must be a hard task. This has got to be one of the strongest tasks. Let's, let's dwell into it and be as open if you do not mind. Mm -hmm. As you say in the U.S., straight up front, straight ahead. If you go through Omaha and some of the rural city, they, you will see schools mm -hmm. that literally have no windows, no laboratories, no chalkboards, roofs are caving in. As commissioner, let us go at that level. What are you going to do? What is your, what's your plan on improving the infrastructures of the school? Actually, this, uh, I met a lot of challenges in this industry when I came in. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you will agree with me that the educational sector is the greatest industry of this government. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, in any Western society, by any parameter, because you just got to be educated, you have to have a society that is educated to be able to flow, to appreciate. Uh, unfortunately, the educational uh, integrity of other states was eroded. It was, it was just on the floor, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when I got it. Like you rightly said, the infrastructures we are nothing to write home about. The public schools, you know, most of them are not supposed to be called public schools because they don't have what it takes to be called schools. Mm -hmm. They are a complete infrastructure decay. Even they were completely discipline on the part of even the teachers who were, who were more committed to doing their private businesses rather than teaching for which they earn their salaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and of course, in the, in the, even in the private schools, a whole lot of them were illegally you know, operating within the state. Mm -hmm. They bastardized the entire system. Mm -hmm. you know, so what, what I did first, you know, appreciating the fact, yes, there were infrastructural decay, but I had to start from the roots you know, to start cleansing the system. So what I did was, I started by closing illegal schools. Those schools that don't want to be called schools. Those schools that don't have the approval of government to operate at schools. Mm -hmm. Because you have to have the approval so that we can be able to monitor you. What you're doing. You know, do you have the right classes? Do you have the right teachers? Do you have the right space? Are the classrooms convenient for the kids to be in school and all that? Mm -hmm. You know, for those schools, we have to close them over 600 of them. And it's still ongoing because I'm still fishing them out and as soon as I fish them out, I close them. Mm -hmm. Then I went into the public schools. I started closing some of the public schools that are completely dilapidated infrastructurally, mm -hmm. completely dilapidated. I had to close down those and now reassign the students that were in these schools to other schools. That's the yeah. other side of the question, yeah. Dr. Max. What do you do so, with those children? Where exactly. Those illegal schools. Yeah. What no. do you do with that? So I have I, for the private schools, mm -hmm. the government does not have control of the children because these are private businesses, but must operate within government approved standards. Okay. So what I now ask through the association mm -hmm. is to have these perpetrators of these closed down schools, mm -hmm. you know, re reassign the school, reassign the children to other schools. It's, okay. It is left for the parents, right. you know, having if a particular school is closed. Parents, it behoves on the parents to now, you know, ask their children or look for other schools that are approved by government, you know, for their kids. Good. That that they did, mm -hmm. that they are still doing. Okay. So also in the public school is now my prerogative, my responsibility because this is government owned schools. So when I close down, from my office I reassign mm -hmm. to other schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To other schools. Right. So right. now what I do thereafter, I will now start repairing, rehabilitating you know, the infrastructure of some of these schools, mm -hmm. and that is ongoing now. I have about 57 of them across the state. 57, 57, schools. 57 schools that are very, very, in fact, they are just, they're in the very serious category, you know, of repair. Okay. You know, so these 57, because they, I, I, I want to do them in phases. Okay. So the first 57 must be in the top class that need the schools that need urgent repairs. 57 of them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Government has uh, pro uh, we have government has approved for their repairs, okay. and repairs will soon start mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, so that we can get these schools back to form, mm -hmm. and of course, and now start readmitting students, fresh students into the schools, or bring some of the schools that we are posted to other schools back to back, back to base. Okay. But the schools must be infrastructurally habitable okay. for students to be there. 
That's yeah. a very good spot to be in. To uh, I, I'm glad to hear that because this governor has been said to be an education governor, mm -hmm. and he needed an education commissioner to make education work. Everybody has seen it. If this infrastructure will change within the school system. Is there any uh, delays? Is there any damages that will that will hurt the school? Is there anything while you're changing that will uh, damage the schools or damage the academic of the students? Not, not, not really. No, no, not really. Except, except that. Well, you know, it, it, by, by by that by that is aside. You know, uh, some schools that will now absorb these other additional school students yeah. may be temporarily inconvenienced by, you know, just maybe because maybe a class that was originally designed to accommodate like 40 students probably may now have to accommodate like 50 extra 10 okay. just for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So as soon as repairs are done in a particular school, I'll move them back to base. You know, that's what we're doing. I might even be able to reduce that 40. Yes, to you know, to, to, to uh, even to 35, yes. you know, which should be the normal standard, mm -hmm. you know, the normal standard of population, you know, according to the Federal Minister of Education, okay. not more than 35 okay. in a given school, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, in a given classroom, okay. you know, with, with proper ventilation and all that, mm -hmm. you know, so that's what it's just temporary inconvenience, but, I mean, that can be absorbed. The thing about education that, that we have seen here in Abia is it's almost so many uh, parameters that need to be placed. What about the teachers? Are the teachers, is there anything in your plan as Commissioner of Education that will improve the quality of educators? Yes. Again, you know, that's where, that's where we have strived. You know, so what would be, you know, having closed illegal schools, having commenced repairs of some of the dilapidated schools, mm -hmm. and I went into instilling discipline on the teachers. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, before now, like I did say, they were not serious, they were not committed with their profession. Most of them were rather trading. They were traders than teachers. Hmm. They were traders rather than teachers. Hmm. So what I did now was now to instill discipline in the system where if, you, if I don't see you in class, of course, you are punished accordingly. Your salary is seized. By the time your salary is seized for a month or two, of course, I will suspend you. And for suspension, I will dismiss you. Hmm. you know? And then now what I did was to now you know, arrange with some NGOs you know, to now have them, you know, build capacity, you know, because, you see, you, they, because they have not taught for a while, because they have deviated from their profession, mm -hmm. they have lacked some qualities in them as mm -hmm. professionals. Right. So they needed to enhance, you know, their capabilities mm -hmm. professionally to be able to teach, because you got to have the education knowledge to impact on others. Okay. If you don't have it, you don't pass nothing. Mm -hmm. So what we did was to now organize a capacity building seminars and workshops. And I did that in zones, Abia North, Abia Central, and Abia South. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, we, we do it in zones, you know, teaching them, enhancing them through workshops and seminars. And again, this is going to be ongoing. You know, and after each seminar, they are assessed by some kind of an assessment test. Good. You know, mm -hmm. so that you can bring them apart, mm -hmm. you know, with the goings on in the modern world. Mm -hmm. and so that's what we're doing. So capacity building, you know, is like a resource building exercise. You know, so they, we, we have, even in 2008, I have, I have met the state government appropriate sufficient funds for capacity building. Because it's important mm -hmm. that, 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 that we enhance the knowledge of somebody who is going to impart knowledge on them. So they can be at par with their teacher in the private institutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw you once with uh, an educational program for those who are older. Yeah. And have never been to school That's in right. their life. And I really, I was so, I, I captured that a mm -hmm. lot. And I mm -hmm. was so admiring of, of seeing that 92 year old lady That's right. who have never been mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm. but now is going to school. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I get truly excited when we are in the subject of education. I really get, I love it because I see that there is a tremendous challenge for this commissioner. The challenge it is. Uh, it's, it's, to most of us, it's mind-boggling. How does he do it? Doctor, talk to us, talk to your audience, talk to your people about the secondary school. Um, is there something in particular? Are you breaking this differently from elementary level, 
secondary level mm -hmm. and then the collegiate level. Yeah, I suspect that that's, you've got to have some kind of a formula for that, that you're using to approach this uh, uh, improving the quality of education in Abia City. Could you, could you talk about the secondary school? Yeah, I, 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 I did talk about it uh, a, a little bit. You know, uh, what, what we're doing in the primary school infrastructurally is also applicable and at the secondary level, you know, because most of these uh, structures are decayed, and we'll, we, we, we have a comprehensive uh, package, you know, program of rehabilitation, mm -hmm. you know, of all our schools, infrastructurally, mm -hmm. you know, as well as, uh, you know, um, uh, materially too. Mm -hmm. uh, for the secondary level, you know, the addition we have is to in equip uh, every school with modern information communication technology. You know, and uh, uh, no, no. No, 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 for us. Uh, when I see it, that is like a computer, you know, literally speaking, mm -hmm. you know, so that every student in the secondary school level will, will turn out to be a computer literate. Hey! Right. Yeah, wonderful, so wonderful. That's, that's, that's what we're doing, and we've gotten approval from Education Trust Fund, ETF, mm -hmm. in collaboration with a multi choice, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, to do this in segments. Okay. You know, and this will augment. You know, the, the resources are credible from the state government. Okay. You know, but the most important thing is that this proposal was widely accepted by our amiable governor, okay. who is willing and ready you know, to, to, to give every financial and moral backing into this sector. You know? Is there, do you have the finance, do you have the money to do what, to meet this vision of yours, and to meet this, this objective, this goal? Do you have the money for it? Well, I, I I don't have all the I don't have all the, all the financial capability to be able to achieve this, but I'm very hopeful, you know, that with the assistance of some of the NGOs whom we've been talking to, and some of whom have been very cooperative, like I did mention, mm -hmm. the ETF, the UNESCO, the MDG, even even Abians in diaspora. Uh -huh. Abians, this is an opportunity, you know. I intend to travel to the U, U United States. And in Canada and Europe, you know, to, to, to solicit for the assistance in this regard. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, they, some of them have been doing quite a lot before now, and we expect them. I urge them, you know, this is an opportunity, this is a medium to ask you to please come to our aid. We need to aggressively transform the educational sector in this state, mm -hmm. you know, and get every Abian, every Abian literate enough to be able to flow you know in this modern age mm -hmm. you know so yeah. and we have to start from the grassroots yeah. you know even our daddies and mommies now mm -hmm. as old as they may be now have an opportunity to be educated can you believe that yes they have an opportunity to be educated in fact i have the just the last wire that was just taken i have i have a 92 year old mother who sat for wire and passed 92 year old Take who, that to the who bank. Ne who, ne who never had an opportunity to go to school? And mighty too. And Very strong and heavy. Under yes. your commission. That's right. That's under right. this administration. We're performing miracles here. We're really performing uh, miracles in this sector. Hey, miracles in this sector. This is the 92 year old. Mm -hmm. Now have a certificate. Mm -hmm. Now can now, you know, be proud to say, I am educated. I have I have the basis, you know, for life. And what have we done? We have injected more life into this young, old woman, so to say. Because she has gotten what she never dreamt of having. And we, so we have all kinds of programs. And all we need is just assistance from all, you know, all and sundry. Because the state government alone cannot can, can do it. Yes, yes, so we need assistance of everybody. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, there's still some areas uh, you can still see there's some people who have already had some educational background, graduated. Do you have any means of tying this uh, increasing need for education and the industry and work? There's many people who are, been said, you know, in the U.S. they say there's many people who have been, who are with PhDs and they drive in taxis. And here in Abia, and in some parts of Nigeria, they say there's many people who are already graduate and are car drivers. Is there something that you're working in your relationship with all the other commissions to try to move those who are already educated into the 
Industrial complex. Oh yeah, this is what well, is one of the agendas of this governor. I mean, he's a, I must I must say without equivocation and without fear of favor mm -hmm. that this is the governor. T A O G is God sent, and this is a man who is widely traveled. This is a man who is, has acquired so much experience, mm -hmm. and he has been on the ground. Yeah. And that's why the man is performing like you know magic yeah. and miracles. Yeah. You know, in this state, uh, it, this the skill acquisition. You know, is one of his key point agenda. Mm -hmm. You see, what I do here is I churn out these graduates, mm -hmm. you know, bring them to a level where they can now appreciate and appreciate life mm -hmm. in totality. Mm -hmm. While the, se the other sectors like the commerce and industry, mm -hmm. you know, and poverty alleviation, right. all administration will now absorb, you know, them. Mm -hmm. as, as the, you know, my final product, they will now absorb them mm -hmm. and make them self employed. Okay. You know, so with the skill acquisition going on, you know, where they learn all kinds of trade, mm -hmm. you know, because they need to have basic education mm -hmm. to be able to appreciate some of these other endeavors of life. Of you know, so the skill acquisition is an ongoing thing. And under pri primarily the poverty alleviation program mm -hmm. of the government, mm -hmm. you know, so what it takes to do is the final products from the education sector mm -hmm. and from the other sectors, you know, will now be transferred to that ministry for absorption and make them self reliant. Self, you know, they self dependent, right. you know, so they get into they get into private endeavor right. rather than looking out, you know, of course, you know, looking out to government right. for, for, for employment, right. you know. So, the, we have a comprehensive program. No, the government know, can be the poor employer, exactly. The private sector has to be some yeah. help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you working somewhat with the private sector mm -hmm. as an educator? Yeah. Are you working with the private sector to try yeah. to provide the kind of Atmosphere for your educated children. Oh yeah. Children. Oh yeah. Then we, we there, there are quite a lot of them who have written even from the United States. Some of them from Europe. You know, uh, 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 appreciating what we're doing now mm -hmm. and indicating their interest. You know, to come partner with us. Right. You know, and the government has always said, "Hey, we'll give you land. We'll give you all the conducive factors." to be able to come and partner with us and establish whatever you want to establish here. Mm -hmm. And so we, our doors are open. So we've been interacting with them. And we believe that within the next one year, you know, there will be a lot of private public participation in, the, in, in, in this government. Right. And that will absorb quite a lot. You know, because there are people, there are some who had written saying that they have all kinds of factories that from China and they want to establish and they will take like 3,500 you know, graduates or uh, people, and you know, there are some who, who are into real estate, you know, there are some who are coming to put on one factory or the other, right. you know, and all these, if, if they are... And they need educated uh, workers. Yes, of course, yeah. they need that, so they yeah. don't have to import right. educated people, yes, you know, so yes, we yes. need to use our homegrown graduates, yes, you know, yes, to work yes. in these factories when they are finally established. They do work so they yeah. see, you cannot say that my job is to ensure that I have the necessary qualified manpower yes. to be able to fill in these gaps. Yes, 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 yes. That was mad. It, mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, we're going to continue this discussion, but is it possible that you can take us to some of your educational system or facilities so we can take a look at it and show yeah, and you know, to be honest with it, let's show a dilapidated one and one that is being worked on oh. under your commission. Is oh, that sure. a possibility? Oh yeah, 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 no problem. You know, we we we're there. You know, we're there across the state. We can take samples of some of the schools that are really bad. Some of the schools that repairs are ongoing, yeah. and some of the schools that we're all setting up for the information communication technology yeah. prepared yeah. just to furnish the equipment. And uh, not not quite recently, just about three days ago. I just distributed 400 kits, or micro science kits, to secondary schools. This is a labless lab, so to say. Okay. Labless lab. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you know, play, that, that is for sciences, mm -hmm. for physics, chemistry, biology, intro technology. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, these kits are, you know, do it yourself kits. Mm -hmm. You know, that, 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 that takes you from physics to intro tech, mm -hmm. any field in science, you can do it yourself. These are for students, secondary schools. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have introduced that. You know, and firstly, we have to train the teachers who will in turn teach these students on how to man these kids. You know, so we, we're pumping a lot into, into, into the system. You know, system. all we need is just the assistance of everybody, yes, you know, yes. to be able to transform the system to or move it from the level we met it to a better level that will be widely appreciated. Doctor, this is a mission that is um, admirable by anybody who has got any sense of. Uh, any kind of sense at all that you can see the need 
uh, it, it's a total admiration. Uh, this kind of dialogue in the century, but give us a sense of what your vision is for Aden. Tell, talk to Aden um, across the world. Uh, let them know what your vision from a commissioner's perspective is. What? And have you've touched on a lot. You've touched yeah. on a lot. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But if you can just uh, bring it to some kind of a, uh, a mash it up, so to speak. Yeah, I, you know, I, I began, firstly, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity and the trust reposed on me to serve in this capacity as Commissioner for Education. And also, I want to also draw from the strength you have given, you know, to commend the Executive Governor, Dr. Theodore Ahmed Lodge, for also giving me an opportunity to serve. You know, you have always served you, and I'm willing, you know, to serve you in any capacity you are called upon to serve. Because mine, for me, this position is a call to service, and I will not hesitate to serve you. It is my dream, you know, to transform the educational sector, you know, to a level where you and I will really appreciate education the way it is. The infrastructure must be improved. The the, the quality of teachers must improve. You know, the the conveniences you know pertaining to an institution of a higher learning must be appreciated. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to continue to train and retrain teachers, you know, on a constant basis. You know, I want to ensure that bursaries and scholarship are given to our needy and indigent students, you know, of Abia in the whole region. You know, I want to ensure ensure that every Abian student, you know, is computer literate. You know, I, I may not achieve it during my tenure hundred percent. But I have set the pace, the precedent is set, and I believe that this precedent will continue, that over years, that every student of Abia origin will be computer literate. I also want to you know, say that you know, for the students who are there, this is a rare opportunity for you to be modern in all ramifications. You know, the miracle centers, of course, you know, is going to be a thing of the past because you are going to write your exams right here. You, the miracle centers are going to be abolished and they remain abolished. You know, the teachers, you know, you are going to be committed to teach these students so that they don't have reasons to look out to buy certificates rather than earning their certificates. You know, you have to be in class and teach them. You know, we were taught in class. You know, we, we sat in the class and wrote our exams. So it will be my dream that at the end of my tenure that the miracle centers would have been a thing of the past that are no more. You know, and all these other factors that I have so mentioned are achieved and realized. All to the glory of God and to the blessing of mankind because we are the field officers. We are going to appreciate all these goodies, you know, coming from this sector, so to say, courtesy of our amiable executive governor, Dr. T.R.J. Wonderful. I, I want to ask you one last uh, question that is, I used to be a PTA president. How are you working with the parents, just the parents of, the, of these students? Uh, is there a parent teacher association? Yes. And, and do you have some relationship with them? Oh yeah, we do. We do. I, I have. I have. Uh, I have taught the entire state. You know, Zona Lido, You know, and uh, uh, the meetings we organize. Uh, that is uh, the parent teachers association of the various schools in, in a, every particular zone with me and my officials. And of course, you know, we needed to interact, you know, and let them appreciate the fact that, hey, that I'm here representing them uh, to me, to, you know, to the governor, that whatever they need, that they will do. And of course, solicit their cooperation, continued cooperation in ensuring that schools that their various localities are maintained, you know, and, uh, you know, kept, you know, to standard. You know, because they have really been of immense help. I must commend them. You know, because most of these schools that were dilapidated are being managed and repaired by funds realized by parents. Okay, good. You know, and the, to, 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 to that extent, I commend them. And so I needed to do that through these meetings to commend them and to urge them to continue with their good works. But so we, we, have a, we have a constant rapport because I relate with the associations, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we, we have been working on them amicably. Dr. Daniel, I am just so pleased. I am just so very proud. You, uh, you have a task. 
and where would you? And I'm sure that the parents need to be supportive of this educator. Parents need to work with this educator to educate their children. Educators, teachers, all must work with this man. It's professional. Education in Ibia is no longer the thing of the past. The teacher is there, and it's up to you. Those Ibians who are in the United States, Britain, Canada, you need to think about what you're doing there and what needs to be done here. I see sometimes that there's some schools that really need help. And as long as this educator is working hard for you, you need to come back and work hard with him. Doctor, thank you very much. We're going to be visiting the schools. We're going to be walking with you in the schools and you know, maybe talk to some of the teachers mm -hmm. to see how they are uh, also if the energy, mm -hmm. if, you, if your energy is pouring into them, mm -hmm. because I see some very strong energy and I can make you for it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chief Obidike Adirujubu, and I'm very solemn when it comes to education issues. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to meet this man. Um, we will do this again. We'll be back in about six months to check it out and see what's going on. If, and I am sure, what has been said now is true. We'll see what's going on. This is Chief Obidike Adirujubu. NigerianTVOnline.com Here in God's own state, Abia, we will see you when we see you. God bless and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.